Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. Today's pick a card reading I literally got called to do and it came when I was contemplating the fact here in Australia, the day that I'm actually uh, recording these set of readings, and this is a timeless reading so it doesn't matter when you watch it, but when I'm recording it it's the 29th of June, tomorrow's the 30th of June obviously, and in Australia, those who are in Australia will know that that heralds the end of financial year. So for Australia, the financial year goes from the 1st of July in any given year through to the 30th of June in the following year. I know it's different in other countries, but for us around this time, we can start thinking about things like tax returns and so forth. And I thought, you know, why not focus that energy, that thinking about the material world, abundance, what we want to create, what we want to manifest in the world as a, a really positive exercise, rather than just thinking about all those sort of logistics and so forth. And so it came to me that it would be a really good timing to do a reading about how you can manifest abundance in your life. And as I contemplated this, I thought about how the whole process of, of manifestation, all of that kind of thing, if you're planning for it and you're really trying to take it seriously, it, to me it's a bit like gardening in, in as much as there is always a process and this is, this is a good time to do it around pruning back limiting that which was blocked, looking at what is no longer working. So that's the, the pruning process in, in gardening. Then there's a process of sort of laying the foundation, tilling the land, making sure that everything's ready for new growth, which to me is sort of like the part of manifestation when you go, what are the foundations I have that I still want to keep, I still want to let grow, but possibly I don't have to focus as much attention on, I just, I just need to make sure that that is, is looked after. And then there's the seeding process, which is what is the new that I'm trying to bring in. And so I thought that becomes a really lovely metaphor for this. So the structure of the reading is going to be pretty much based around that. And so we'll be looking at what can you remove in terms of blocks, whether they're psychological or material, what can you what can you sort of lay foundations for or continue to work on that's working well for you? What What is new that you could bring in that will help you manifest your desires and your abundance even more? And... As a result of that, I've, I've picked a lot of decks that have that kind of wildlife theme, wherever that kind of fits in, to sort of just connect in with that. But we will have a number of other decks as well as we go through. But for the choice, I'm using the wisdom of the Sacred Bee Oracle because, you know, the, the whole bee culture, the sort of like productivity, the working together, the, the being prepared to put the hard yards in when it's necessary, the optimism, all of those sort of things, the collaboration, I thought it becomes a really nice metaphor for this process again. And I intuitively chose four cards to choose from, which will represent in the first part of the reading the energy around the new that you would be seeking to bring in. So this may help you choose or you might choose intuitively by colour or by number. It doesn't really matter what works for you because it's just one of the cards, a number of cards that will set the theme of what this looks like for you. So that's up to you. But if it does help to choose, if you're thinking about, you know, what would I like to be seeding into, into my life now? What, what, what is the thing that I want new growth in? Pile number one has passion. Pile number two has illumination. Pile number three has connection. And pile number four has innovation. So as I say, that'll be part of the energy, but there's other cards that will give us the sense of the whole picture. So that's not the only thing, but it may help you choose. So when you know what reading or readings you want to go to, the description box, as always, has the timestamps for it. Just want to say quickly, in terms of manifesting my own world and what I'm trying to do here, I do do personal readings now. If people are interested in those, I do it through my Etsy store. The link is in the description box below and also on the links section of my About page for this channel. It's the only way you can get readings from me. So I'll never try and solicit anything like that on Instagram or in the comments or anything like that. So if that ever happens, if you ever approach by someone claiming to be me, it won't be me. So I do know there's scammers out there who do this with tarot readers. I'm not aware of them doing it with me, but just in case, I don't want anybody to be scammed. I also don't want anybody to ever feel pressure to or an expectation from me to get a personal reading. But if you would like to, that's how you do it. So with no further ado, I will leave you to determine which reading or readings go to more than one if you want there's no problem with that when you know go to the timestamps below and i'll see you there welcome pile number one to your reading so 
This is a little bit squashed for uh, want of space with the camera angles I have, but I will sort of show the cards a bit more as I go along. But picking up the theme, as I said, of the pruning, what one needs to do less of, limit, clear blockages from the tilling of the land, the setting of the foundations, what to carry forward, but then also what to focus on in the seeding process to really manifest in your life. Each of these three sets of cards are meant to represent that on a high level, which we'll then look at with the tarot. So this is interesting. I would say people who've come to this reading, if you've come to the right reading, when we look at passion down here, which is what may have drawn you here, it could connect to love. So this could bring in love, but if it does, it's a rather circuitous sort of route. I think it's more passion for something that you believe in, a cause that you have, something that you want to express in the world. And it comes from a period of time where you've maybe been a bit behind the scenes and you've learnt a lot and it's ready, you're getting ready to take something out. Because if we look at the storyline here, the narrative, and there is also something where maybe you felt that you were trying to seek redemption literally or <clears throat> you felt that you didn't sort of follow your, your sort of guidance or your spiritual path or what you were meant to do or that you made some mistake that you, you feel bad about. There's something where you've been on a little bit of a journey to start with around serving others and being a bit behind the scenes rather than being up front but helping challenging something. So this looks to me like many of you, as I say, there might have been you, know, you did something in terms of what you studied or something in your workplace or even something around friends or lovers where you sort of feel a little bit bad about it, that maybe you felt that you that passion energy that is in you made you do certain things that now in retrospect you felt were not the right use of power or the right use of influence or something. There is there is a redemptive arc that you have been on. And as a result, with the sen sen Seneschal here, which is effectively the Knight of Earth, but in or the Knight of Pentacles, but in this deck is about, in a sense, the power behind the throne, the person who serves. You know, very, I always get a very samurai-like feeling or, or sort of court uh, advisors, you know, in a medieval, medieval court or something when I see this card, or people who are, say, in an organization, the chief operating officer as opposed to the CEO, that kind of feeling. There's been a period where you've done that and and you may even have taken up arms in a very broad sense. I'm not literally saying in terms of sort of using weaponry, but you've, you've challenged and pushed and and helped something, a cause where, as I say, you feel maybe, you know, that you were on the wrong path at one point. But Spirit is saying here that, you know, you really have done that. You can let go of the need for redemption. You've, you've kind of served your time in a way, in that sense. And there's a lot in you that is creative and there's a lot in you that is wise. You've actually learned a lot through the process of doing it. So there is a sense here of letting go of the, sense, the, the belief that you have to make up for something or you have to even prove yourself in some way, potentially. If you, the redemptive arc is more where you have been told that you were lesser in some way and you've, you've had to sort of challenge that viewpoint and, and you've done it by moving up the ladder, being in positions of sort of influence, learning the environment that you're in. Spirit is saying here, that's done. You can prune away that focus. It doesn't mean you let go of everything because in fact, you won't let go of the wisdom. You've got a lot of wisdom out of this. And, and, and a lot of understanding about when it is good to be in the public eye or seen and when you need to do things behind the scenes. So you're not losing that. You're What you're carrying forward, what the foundation is that you have is around wisdom. But it's time now to make a decision about where you sit on something. The Democrat card here is not about being a Democrat in US politics. It's about the concept of democracy. It's about the concept of being able to support others and so forth. So in, in, in terms of social things within a workplace, you know, that the concept that everybody has a voice. And so it may be that some of you had been on the fast track and you felt, you know, that you'd somehow left that behind and now you've, you've done the work to redeem that energy for yourself. And now you want to take that wisdom and help others have a voice and help others make decisions potentially. But there's a big thing here about decision making, wise decision making, and that's your foundation. So all that you have done to redeem whatever this energy was, to challenge in a different way, whatever you were looking at doing, you're now at a point where you'll have a foundation around wisdom. So spirit is definitely saying part of your abundance will not now come in from knowing when to show your face, when to be behind the scenes, 
when to make decisions, how to bring other people along with you. The interesting thing is that that all feels very organisational, political calls to me, and certainly anybody who's come here that that, that resonates for that, that's absolutely the case. But the interesting thing is when we get to passion, what you want to bring in, what your sort of new energy is that you're bringing in, what you're seeding, and that, that sort of feels like, as I say, relationship, creative and so forth. We have the seven of water or seven of cups, so the sense of ideals, ideals, love, beauty and so forth, and the creator energy. So moving from someone who's pushing up against the world in some way, possibly to prove something, to someone who's got this wisdom now and this capacity to bring someone, other people along, and then the creation energy. So it's saying that you're moving into a point of view where something about your emotions as well as your mind and what you're manifesting. So we've got the sort of the, the manifestation of earth there. We've got the mind really with wisdom and then we've got the heart. That's what connects it. So I think this is saying that there's something creative you're going to do. Now that creativity is many different things. For some of you, this could literally be you know, moving into a creative field. That's what you really would love to do. And it's your way of taking all that you've learned maybe in a more material world and the wisdom that you've got and you bring people along with you by creating something beautiful, a beautiful novel, you know, beautiful music, you know, beautiful artwork. For others, I think it, your passion now is to take all of this material wisdom and almost political, structural, the rules of the world type wisdom and create something that is more ideal. Like there's a very, very strong sense of idealism here. And I think it's what triggered the redemptive curve. I mean, I think that you felt that you let yourself down on your ideals in some way or that you got off course and you have been putting a lot of work into that to sort of realign what you do spiritually and sort of ethically and philosophically. And spirit says, yeah, don't, don't be on your case anymore here. You're meant to move into a creative thing where what has come out of that is a passion, a passion towards, I think, collaboration, connection, emotional resonance, emotional opportunities, and to bring in something new. So I think that the, the seeding process is how do you take this foundation? How do you let go of the, the self-criticism and the self-discipline because you've got what you need there. You've got the balance. You, your decision-making decision making is now on point. How do you bring that forward to create something that you're passionate about? Because I think possibly for many of you, you sort of went straight into something like that and maybe sort of you know, got too high up the ladder or almost a bit like Icarus, you know, flew to the sun and you, your wings melted or you felt that you burnt out all before you because you were so ambitious and now you're sort of kind of finding your way back. You've definitely done the work now. You know, Spirit says, don't worry about that anymore. Take the wisdom from it. You're ready to create something. Really now you understand the structure of the world. You understand how to collaborate with others. You understand how to use power correctly. So I do think many of you will do something very new and different in whatever space you're in. And that will help bring in abundance because it's aligning your philosophical idealism with what you create. It just feels like you kind of felt you lost your way a bit, you know, went for the money, went for the fame, whatever it was, you're, you're realigning and spirit is congratulating you for that and saying that you're now ready to do what you're really passionate about. So let's have a look with the tarot. So we're going to get just a little bit more about what block to remove, which I think is around this sort of sense of redemption and self-criticism. Then we're going to ask what seeds a bit more about this creation and then spirit's advice more generally. So firstly, for pile one, tell us a little bit more, Spirit, about what this redemptive self-critique, you know, thing, and always challenging themselves, you know, and so forth. Like, what what sort of inner programming almost is is there, and how can they sort of remove the blocks around that and let that go? Okay, so it's interesting we have the Hermit Reverse and Death Reverse because we're really seeing the, the storyline of these first two lines. The, the Hermit, when it is upright, is very spiritual, goes within, it does not show their face very well. It feels a bit like that energy of the Knight of Pentacles there. So this is saying, Spirit is saying, that is not the energy anymore. You actually have to start to create, bring your passion, say what you think. Don't take the, the hidden sort of spaces anymore. And you have to allow yourself to make decisions. 
even if you still feel there's something unjust, even if you feel that you did something that wasn't right, even if you feel you're in environments where justice and injustice is an issue, in fact, even more so if that's the case, if you are feeling now for your idealism that you are in an environment that is unjust, then it's even more why you need to come out from behind the scenes and make decisions. And the, the good thing is we had decision as the energy that you have really you know, planted already. You know, th this is the new that you're going to plant, but you've already sort of tilled the land and got the sort of sense where you have enough wisdom to feel you can make the decisions. To do it, you need to work out literally a kind of almost a business plan. I always feel like the Page of Pentacles is like a business plan. Now, if this is in an organisation, that's literally what you would be doing. If you are looking to create a business to sort of take something forward that you're, you, you have passion about, that's literally something to do. It's like working it out for yourself, not helping others realise their business plan, their ambition, but starting to articulate that. But Spirit is definitely saying there's something about an injustice that blocked you. And I do feel for many of you, you felt like you took almost the wrong side of the challenge or something, you, or you used you know, principles you know, or your influence to use principles that, that, that were not right. And you still carry a bit of this. This is the block you need to lift. You are not to blame for whatever this was. And you have got the wisdom and you know what to do. So you now need to move into that foundational level and come out from behind the scenes a bit. But plan, plan for what that looks like in practical terms. And if this is sort of something creative in the more sort of traditional creative area, it's almost like think about what are the the materials you need to use. What is the best modality for you? Is it you know music? Is it art? Is it writing a book? And with all of that, what materials do you need so that you can do that? Because if you don't work that out, it almost becomes a bit of an excuse. Like, oh, I'd write the book, but you know I don't have the right software or. I'd love to sort of do a suite of paintings, but I can't afford to go and get the, the, the materials. There's something about material energy that you need to sort of plan for and put in place because otherwise you stay stuck in this and, and, it, and it keeps on being in this redemptive curve. So certainly Spirit wants you to let go of that concept. You, you got there because you have a strong sense of justice. Now it's how you create something to, to do something new. So let's ask about that in more detail. What is this creative energy for you? What do you need to have material plans for? Wow. Okay. For a start, there's two things that jump out really quickly to me for this, for if it's creative in the traditional sense. One is writing with swords. And I feel like potentially writing something that really goes to the heart of what you know your ideals are and what you think the world is not doing that it should be doing or an organization is not doing that it should be doing. Some of you, it may be through something like journalism or, or something in that sort of space, or as I say, writing novels, but there's a lot about communication here potentially also online with the Page of Swords, but a lot about the mind. So for many of you, in some form, the way you speak, you, know, you could literally be an advocate, you know, you could be a politician with the challenger and the Democrat there. It could be how you how you position your wording and you now come out and you say that more and it's 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 like the 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 resonance of your voice or the words that you use or what you write in some way. It could be an online presence, definitely something like that. And that's probably more in the kind of business or political end, but it could also be writing novels and those sorts of things. The other thing I get before I get to the fool here, which is just the new energy, and this is a new pathway for you, Ten of Cups, certainly something emotionally connected. But it's interesting, one of the other decks we will be using in this is the Divine Animal Oracle. And they actually have you know, an oracle, there's a, and they have orca, which may or may not come up, but it talks about song lines. So I do think some of you, there could be music associated with this. Now, it could be either literally that you are creating music, or it could be saying that music is a very great inspiration for what you need to do. When you're really working this through, use music, you know, to help you to, 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 to be almost a muse energy. And as I say, it's really just doubling down on this is a new pathway. Don't let that that sort of worry about did you make the right decision before, did you do something that was true to your vision before, slow you down. You are meant to sort of go forward with the confidence and almost the innocence of the fool. You do have the wisdom, but you need to be able to unleash yourself. You need to be able to literally like this, be a bird and fly free. This is not about 
finding, oh, I, I don't feel ready yet. You are very ready. You are very ready to face whatever this was down and to let that energy go and then to communicate something that's much more from your heart. So this is all about getting off your own back, to be honest. The, the one thing that's been probably blocking your manifestation has been self-critique and maybe holding yourself to too high ideals, you know, like get back to your heart and what you're passionate about. You, you're much more idealistic and and sort of righteous in a, in a good way than, than you are giving yourself credit for. Okay, so let's get just three cards more from the Tarot for Spirit's advice about bringing all this together for you before we have a look at some of the other aspects of this. Six of Pentacles. King of Swords. Ace of Cups. Okay. So I'm getting a couple of things interesting for this. For some of you, if this was around relationships and how you are in relationship and whether you did the right thing in a relationship and whether you now have worked out what you want to do with the passion, if it was about that, there's definitely the possibility of a new love, new passion coming in. But it re requires you to let go of this sort of mental energy that is combative. You find something that is more balanced. So for those that went, oh, passion, I came to this because it's about love and you're talking a lot about, you know, sort of ideals and, and philosophy and, and power, then there was probably something in the relationships that you're now moving away from that had that sort of energy. It was all very mental. It was all very challenging and it was all very sort of, you know, who's going to win, who's right. And you've got to the point of understanding that's not a, a positive way to be in a relationship. So certainly I'm getting, if, if this is literally that, that Spirit is saying this, the more collaborative energy of the Democrat is, is the thing to look at, you know, and again, that's something to build into what you materially want. So if you're looking at trying to bring in a relationship, then almost like you do your list, you know, your sort of wish list for what you're looking for, then you're looking for collaboration, mutual respect, generosity of spirit, true openness of the heart, not some mental mind games. Now, if it's not about relationship, getting back to what I think it is for a lot of people who've come here, which is more about who you are in the world, in your career or your or how you express yourself in the world and your beliefs and philosophy and so forth. Spirit again is saying that it's about the heart connection to the right collaborators and finding the right material sort of support and that you will find it. But there's still some energy around this. This is why it's very important for you to not second guess yourself all the time. You're more than ready. You've got the wisdom to deal with this, but you are still going to come across people who are trying to, you know, play sort of political games or legal games or something like that. So Spirit is definitely saying that to use some of the wisdom that you have developed to know when there could be a trap again, because you're, you've got a very clear vision now about what you want to bring in, and that's what's going to bring it in, but it'll bring it in for you and others around you. It's not just about you having a million dollars in your bank account and living in a mansion. This is, you know, you may well get there, but this is more about how there is a sharing of resources and how there is abundance for more than just you. And, and it's partly about your ability to bring that in that will bring the abundance to you and open your heart, make you feel fully healed from this energy. Okay, so very interesting, you know, as I say, get off your back, you've done the work. So what was also under this card were a couple of cards from a dream reading deck because I wanted to look at dream energy that might be around this that could be symbols and also oracular energy so one of each that may help you also clarify what to let go of or prune what to to till and keep and what to you know bring in that's new so for you we have celebration social occasions and the dream energy and empowerment, okay, in the oracle. So certainly with empowerment here, the spirit is very much saying you're meant to be becoming the creator, not, not just the challenger, not just the person who helps the challenger, not the person behind the scenes. You have a right to move into an empowered situation. If you felt that you didn't for some reason, then you, you are moving into a cycle where you are. And, and a lot of the empowerment comes from this collaborative heart-centered approach and what you create. So there's a lot of power coming in for your passion. So don't doubt that. Celebrations and social occasions. This makes me think, if this is dream energy around this, that, that it's either that maybe there was something in your social circle, friendships or relationships that caused this sort of self-doubt to start with. Maybe you felt combative. Maybe you didn't feel that you fitted in. Maybe you felt that 
that you somehow got ahead of some of your friends and there were issues with that. There's something around friendships, connections, social networks here. Part of the social media and so forth is a way to start to use that wisdom and get that out there and that's part of what shifts it. So there's, there's just an energy around the people that you have around you and who are the right people for you, I think, you know, who are, who are aligned with you, who also with that Democrat card believe in sort of equity and, and mutual respect and so forth. So that's an energy to think about. Who is your tribe now as you really come out with what you create? Okay, so let's have a look with, some, with the hard code oracles just on some basic energy about what you might be able to manifest as you start to, to do this gardening process, so to speak, around your abundance. So we're just going to get a card for relationships, for lifestyle, and then for finance and career. And this could either be some of the blockages still to remove. It could be energies about what to sort of lay the foundations. It could be the new. We'll just see what spirit wants to talk about in each area of your life. So for relationships, time apart. Okay, so there may be something, maybe this for some of you has been around a relationship that you felt bad about or that you felt you needed to redeem yourself after. And you, you do need that time apart. And you have been doing it, I would say, if that's the case. So it's now, do you want to recreate that, bring that together, or do you look at it to move on? If it's not about a love relationship, it may be that you've actually gone through this almost hermit-like behind-the-scenes exercise. You've done that. It's now time with the, the dream energy around celebrations and social occasions to think about when and how do I reintroduce and who do I reintroduce into my life? You know, that, what will work for for you? Let's see, lifestyle. Baggage. Yeah, you've got a lot of baggage. This is what this is saying, but it's baggage that you're you're putting on yourself. So some of this is about like letting that go. Like the, this is a very important part of this reading for Pole One. For some, that's going to be less important than the middle part or, the, or this. But this is really clear. You are really too hard on yourself about something, whatever it is. And it doesn't have to be literally that you've done something wrong and you feel bad about it. You just might feel that you got off your path or you hadn't really worked out what you wanted or you should have achieved certain things by this age or whatever it is. That's all just baggage. Let that go. You're so used to carrying that that you challenge yourself rather than take your passion out into the world. Let's see, very materially, financial and career energy around this for you. So financially, accumulate. So yeah, you're going to be you're going to be in a growth phase now. And I'd say you probably, many of you, particularly if this is more around career or politics or something, you have been in a process of sort of building and accumulating money. That's why you're going to be in a position to, to be generous and connect and collaborate and so forth. So you're on a on a upward swing financially. Or once you start to see this, you certainly will be. And then around career, frustration. Yeah, so you might be dealing with frustration. This is, this is you're ready to create. This is what Spirit is saying. It's like your own baggage has been the thing that maybe stopped you going into what you needed to do. And once you actually start to own your next step that you're meant to, to create now, not just to support the creator, so to speak, then you're going to sort of move forward. But you've probably been getting a bit of a nest egg. And once you start to move past this block, because this is definitely talking about this block, where you're holding yourself back, being very loyal, being very good, learning a lot, but holding yourself back, that will release that frustration. This is all about the baggage that you are that you have been carrying for so long, about feeling, you know, as I say, that you did something wrong or you didn't do something soon enough or whatever it might be. Okay, so let's look at what you could manifest going through this gardening process. We're going to look at sort of some manifestation energy and some astrology. Then we're going to look at what helpers you can have and what your own magic is. So firstly, what can you manifest as a result of going through this, this abundance building gardening process, pile one? Energy. And luxury, okay, you're definitely going to be okay financially. You're definitely going to, you, you, this is just a block that you've got to get over. There might be some of you, I don't know if you work in spiritual stuff or if you work in not-for-profits or something like that, you might almost have this sort of like underlying programming that says it can't be about the money, I can't think about the money. 
But that's not true. You know, sometimes you need money, like with Six of Pentacles, and when you build it, you can actually share it and you can help and you can create more with that. So look at it. This is why this energy about the block, start to look at it as a business plan. Start to allow that you could make money, that you could have a good lifestyle, because that will open up the energy of the passion for you. Let's have a look at it in terms of astrology and numerology. Earth, yeah. Earth, earth, earth. If it's a relationship, you're meant to find one that you can ground and have in the longer term. And you will have a lot around the passion of drawing that in with your own sort of magic and your own sort of like belief and creative energy to bring that in. But I do think for many, this is about career or politics or a cause. Earth energy is really important, like things that can manifest in this world. That is, that is this process is so that you manifest things in this world. And it's a very good energy for a reading about bringing in more abundance. Also, conjunction. It could be a great relationship passion. It could be connecting with the right people as well. We'll have a look at the planets around that. One more. Taurus. Yeah, it's earthy. It's about the good life. I think maybe some of you came from privilege and you feel like, you know, you... You somehow have to keep proving yourself or something and, and, and something like that. Or you, you sort of like put an emphasis on the good life and then you felt that let yourself down and so you've been castigating yourself for it. But this is saying you're actually meant to get that because there's something about where you'll get to and what you can create that's going to help others as well too. That will naturally flow. But while you're busy hiding yourself away, feeling that you shouldn't, then you're not bringing that into being and the people that you could have helped aren't getting helped. So let's have a look just what the planets are here in terms of conjunction energy about what you can manifest. So I'll just deal out till I get it. Venus, so for definitely for anybody here, if the passion was about love, you definitely can manifest that. Venus and Uranus and major change. So for any of you that had a cause, a beautiful cause, a political cause, you can also, you can bring about the love, your love, your passion, what you really care about, what's true to your heart helps in the evolution or revolution that you might be trying to bring into being. So, you know, it is time for you to start to sort of create, definitely. Okay, so let's have a look. As I said earlier, we are going to get you a couple of divine animal helpers and also a couple from the wild areas of Australia, just as kind of energetic supports for you in this in this abundance creating process. So we have Gorilla, peace. Yeah, get off your own back. Gorilla's here to say, be at peace with that. You, you really, you probably didn't do anything wrong. Or if you did, you've more than redeemed yourself. So, you know, be at peace with that. Move forward with what is, what is, you know, your destiny, your calling. And Snow Leopard, the Watcher. Okay, so this I think is picking up that for some of you, this is particularly going to be for those where this is resonating that it's in a political or an organisational realm. I think that the Snow Leopard is there to help you watch out for when those King of Sword energies, those things that aren't quite right are around. So Snow Leopard will help you really understand when you have to be careful and who you can trust. So you bring the right people into your life. And then one from... The wild in Australia as well for you. Redback spider. Guard. Yeah, okay. So definitely snow leopard and the redback spider are basically here, you know, to, to give you that sort of sense of support, you know, where there is danger. So so if it's around relationships to help make sure you get the right one, that you don't get caught in mind games or those sorts of things that you might have happened before. But I think, as I say, most people coming here, I feel like this is more around politics or organisations or causes or something like that. So I think you've got a couple of really powerful animal totems here to make sure that you don't go down the wrong pathway again or get beguiled or tricked in any way. And then Gorilla is saying, be at peace. You know, you really do have the wisdom now. Just move forward, you know, have confidence. Okay, so look, let's look at what you bring to it with your creativity energy and with your magic. So firstly, a creative energy that you bring to this process. 
communication yeah it is it's about your voice it's about what you write it's about what you sing it's about what you say it's about getting up on a stage whatever it might be your communication energy that air energy when you use it in the way that it fits with your passion and what you align with as opposed to the political games or mental games or whatever that's been around this that's your creative force you're you're a born communicator and in terms of magic Avenoir, make peace with your past. You can do this. Whatever this was, you can let go of it. And it's time to communicate the future. So, pile one, to finish off, I wanted to use a deck that took us back to the garden. So I'm using a deck that has dragon butterflies with different flowers and so forth. So we're going back to the garden and we're just sort of saying from spirit, what's the final message around this process for you and bringing more abundance into your life? love okay well number one you want to love what you do you've got to love yourself a bit more because you're far too hard on yourself you've got to love what you do you and it may be bringing love in this may be for somebody and it may be even as a side issue anyway that you might be doing a cause or something organizational and then it brings love in as well which is lovely if that's the case but whatever it is you've got to love what you do and you've got to love yourself because your only real block is that you probably got off course with that at some point and you felt like you're constantly redeeming yourself but you can let that go now and you can use what you've learned because you've learned the people not to trust now and you can be at peace with that you're here to communicate a message and you know potentially as i say to bring love in a very real sense into your life as well so i hope that that resonates for you pile one i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe and if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear about it otherwise i hope to see you in future readings Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So these cards show the three elements of the gardening process for bringing abundance into your life that I talked about in the introduction. So we have what is now time to prune, unblock, do less of, etc., less focus on. Then what there is in terms of consolidation, tilling the land, getting everything prepared. So stuff to do, but not necessarily to make the primary focus, just kind of to keep on keeping on. And then we have the energy about what is new and what is being brought in, which is connects to the card that may have been the reason that you came to this, which is wanting to bring in illumination. So this is really interesting, Pile 2, because this is actually telling me that you have spent a lot of time both spiritually and I probably academically or or you know just in terms of your own sort of learning or whatever, spending a lot of energy around connecting your inner knowing your spiritual beliefs your your heart your 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 kind of spiritual pathway you put a lot of emphasis on that with insight here you put a lot of emphasis on wanting to understand things understand you know whatever this may be whether this is in something in a career whether it's you know a spiritual pathway whether it's about love whatever it is in your life that you're wanting to manifest you've spent a lot of time about trying to understand it so you know if it was literally about the law of attraction or something like that you spent a lot of time learning about that listening to people and so forth wanting to develop that sense of faith in the universe connecting it to your heart and spirit saying that's great but you don't have to do as much of that anymore. Like you can almost prune that back. You, you need to know that you know enough now and you are connected enough now and your heart is connected enough now. It's like, it's almost like it's time to manifest. And it's very interesting that we go from faith as an energy here, which is to prune back, which is not to say to lack faith anymore. It's just don't focus just on that. You know, it's time to do, it's time to manifest, it's time to bring things in. So it's not just the concept of I'm going to sort of like, you know, raise my vibrations and so forth and, oh, I need to raise them a bit more and, oh, I've seen the latest sort of article on that and I've got to incorporate all of that and so forth. So it's not just that sort of energy. It's now manifesting it because we have two earth cards here. We have literally the card of foundation in the what is your foundation. So you're very aligned. Like this is what this is telling me. Like, you know, in terms of manifestation, in terms of abundance and all of that sort of thing, you really are aligned. You really have done the work. You can kind of go easy on yourself a bit and just trust in that. And then we have the, you know, the nine of pentacles, you know, the sort of self-made person, like what you are going to start to see it is your own sort of independence. The interesting thing around all of this is that 
they, this insight moves to optimism. So you you have sort of understood. You have sort of understood. You've kind of got the, the the framework there, and you're a little bit obsessive about it. Not meaning to. It's a bit of tough love here, but you're a little bit obsessive about that bit. But the optimism is definitely something to continue with. This space should give you optimism because you have the foundations now. And you're kind of looking for a cause, to be honest. And Spirit is saying that's okay. You know, you, you're actually very protective. One of your energies is a high degree of protection for others. And, and you want to do something that you know, not only brings you abundance, but actually cares for others and, and brings sort of abundance for others or whatever it might be or protects people with a cause it feels very much like looking after those that you love those that are in your heart and so forth and and spirit is saying that is a beautiful foundation and keep that going that that energy towards being the knight being the protector being the one who who wants to bring the beautiful faith into being that's all good so it's not like stopping this completely it's just stopping the focus on it it's like you you've you don't have to think as much about the spiritual because you're all over that. You know, you don't have to think as much about the faith because you're all over that. Now it's about what do you want to do with it? What makes you feel optimistic? What makes you feel like you've got the cause and you're taking it forward and you're you're advancing something? So so it's a bit like, you know, again, like with some people when they talk about twin flames, for instance, so if this is around a relationship, you've got the insight around this connection. You know that it exists. It's time now to look at how you manifest that and how that helps others because you know the, the theory around twin flames is that when they come into union they actually help the collective so that's just an example i think for many of you this is is about one form of relationship or other it may be about family it may be about the team that you work with in an organization that's a bit like sort of a family as well but definitely spirit is saying you know to bring more abundance in that optimism and that foundation recognizing you need to materially make this be in some way and connect it to your heart and your cause, but it's material. So, I mean, it may well be that it, it's time to get out and look for the next job, for instance, or the next promotion, or start a business, or, or you know, if it's around feeling better within yourself and feeling the energy and getting your chakras aligned, starting an exercise program. There's something like that. But it's very much about being optimistic, knowing that you're on the right path, and knowing that your cause is just. And that then brings in illumination. And it's a very interesting thing to move from insight to illumination, if you think about it. Because insight is all about, oh, I kind of can see the mechanics of things and I understand the details of it and I've got the knowledge. Illumination is getting even above that. Illumination is taking it to the next level. And it's a very interesting pathway because it seems to be saying for you that now your illumination will come from what you manifest in the world. You, so you are not meant, what I can tell you, with all this faith in the heart, you're not necessarily meant to go off and be a mystic and sit on the top of a mountain and contemplate the universe. Like you can do it, but it's not going to manifest abundance for you. Your illumination comes in being in the world and helping others, I think, in the world, this caregiver energy. So, you know, it could be starting a family. It could be, as I say, helping others in some way. Your illumination comes from the material. Makes me think of that... Uh, Zen saying that, that goes something like before enlightenment shop wood, after enlightenment shop wood. There's a kind of a sense of it's not about we suddenly become these radically amazing beings that shine in the firmament. It, it, it's actually that we, we understand how we fit in with the material world, what we're meant to do here, what our cause is and how we look after and help others. And you've done all the work on that. Now just start doing it is basically what Spirit is saying. So I think that's a pretty clear message and it's a really lovely message. I think, you know, the people who come to this are very, very spiritual, but it, but you need now to manifest it in the material world. So let's let Taro give us a little bit more information. We're firstly going to ask for a little bit more about what you need to let go of here, what why that could be causing blocks for you or slowing you down. Then we're going to ask a bit more about what you're meant to create and bring in and seed and then Spirit's advice around that. So firstly, a little bit more information around this the potential blocks or the things to prune back and why. Okay, so one of the things that this is saying, interestingly, about why it's important to kind of get out of this energy and get into the material world is that you may have cut yourself off from other people or from 
sort of like you know collaborative opportunities and even ended up in battles around it like you may have found maybe one of the reasons that you've looked so much into this in detail is that you find yourself on social media or friends arguing about your philosophy here and it really matters to you you know this whole process really matters to you and you really want to help but by always just looking for the the information the proof and all of those sorts of things you've maybe cut yourself off from some of the sort of collaborative energy and and found yourself in battle sometimes so that might be why there's this a bit of an obsession about i'm going to learn more i'm going to watch more i'm going to do all of that Spirit is saying it's a block because you actually just need to be in your own heart you've already done that just be optimistic and, and prove it you're not manifesting it at the moment emotionally you're very well developed more developed than most your heart is really open if you are in combativeness with people who don't believe what you believe it's sort of like trying to win the argument and trying to prove the point is not helping you so remember that you have you are connected to your heart you do come from your heart that will bring the right energy in but you need to manifest it the knight of pentacles reverse almost suggests that you're half into this and that's why you're always looking for proof so you're half into believing that that you know your your alignment of your spirit to the manifest world will bring about what you want but you're half out that door as well at the same time you haven't fully committed to that Let's wait for a second sorry if you just heard me just mumble just wait a minute it was because somebody just knocked on my door so i'm back now so as i say you're sort of halfway in and halfway out on a material level uh, and you know you may even be finding i mean with the knight of pentacles reverse for some of you this might make it hard for you to settle on a job settle on what you want to do with your career all of those sort of things so there could be an energy here where the reason that you have to let go of the constant study and searching and, and and seeking of insights and being able to prove the point is because it's it's almost a distraction you know and we do this when when something really matters to us we often go the distraction rather than focus on it so and this does really matter to you so spirit is saying that's why you're kind of finding yourself in conflict potentially with others and you're also not not doing what you're meant to do which is really manifest is really bring in the exact thing that you've been trying to do trust that you actually are ready so let's have a look at what spirit wants to say in terms of the new energy what does illumination rather than insight just the facts the understanding i mean that's really what we're talking about the facts the theories the understanding what does the understanding manifest for you in, and how you can share it with others okay so this is interesting because i do believe that this is saying that you are going to manifest you know you, this is the energy to bring something in the nine of pentacles but with the ten of pentacles reversed it's sort of like if you think about the ten of pentacles reverse and the nine of pentacles they're almost like a halfway point between the nine and the ten one of the things that you're going to manifest is understanding that you can create and then you can create something new again so there isn't a sense that you are meant to manifest something that gets stuck in stone it's meant to be something that can evolve and grow it actually fits very much with the metaphor of of the gardening approach to this that that you know you will build certain things and then you will till the land and you will prune back and then you will build new things so one of the things that spirit i think is saying here in illumination is the understanding that this is this is this will sound really cliche but it's about the journey not the destination it's it's not about oh i will have proven the point about all of this when i have a million dollars in the bank and i'm famous because that's not what it's about with the six of wands reverse it's not about becoming famous it's not about any of that you could do it but it that's not the point what you start to manifest is this thing where you understand the, the greater contribution of what you do you could almost do it behind the scenes without people seeing it doesn't necessarily mean you won't but it's just that's not what the focus is it's not on just the acquisition of wealth it's not on fame it's on negotiating around almost the structure of things this is why insight was important it's now you're moving to illumination so it's less about the details and the negotiation and less about the contemplation you know on of concepts it's moving into something where you actually would negotiate outcomes and you would come out into the world but not necessarily for something that is long term 
but you will be able to do well for yourself and you will be able to provide for others. But but this is the illumination of the fact that, that as I say, the gardening metaphor, that, that things grow, they have their time, they bloom, and then new comes through. So it's about understanding that. This makes me feel, as I say, like you've had people around you that haven't believed what you've believed. You've, had, you've clung on to that because it's close to your heart. But you've got stuck because it's like, well, you know, how would I prove this? And it's almost like the the way that you would prove it is is not necessarily what will what ultimately bring the illumination and the sort of like the the abundance. It's it's like letting go of those concepts that the only way that you could be spiritual with law of attraction, for instance, is if you you know had a million dollars in the bank. As I say, that's not the outcome, and you you will have the illumination of that and understand what it really means to be abundant. So let's see what Spirit says about advice for you. Okay, so I think this is pretty clear. It's really interesting that there's a lot of reversals. I think that, that this is sort of saying that, that there is a shift. There is a shift that you need to, to do, a different perspective that you need to do. And part of it is not looking for the, the emotional and other support and, and approbation, the sort of like, yes, you're, you're, you know, you're sort of the new Anthony Robbins on, on the stage talking about you know, manifestation or whatever. It's not that kind of energy because that's giving too much energy to the theoreticians in the established sort of ways. So I do think illumination for you in some way is about manifesting something, a different approach and a different idea about what abundance is. That's it. It's just, this is sort of like the hierophant, the insight. It's giving too much of your heart. You're more developed than that. You're the queen of cups here. You don't need to worry about a reverse knight of cups. You don't need to worry about the approval of others. You don't need to worry about the recognition from others. You don't need to worry about the texts anymore. I think Spirit just wants you to really see that that this is a very key block to break because <clears throat> what and and to redefine what what is material success? What is it that you want to do? What is it you want to bring in? What is the illuminated thing that really speaks to your heart? Because it's almost as though you, you want the material outcome to prove a point. But you're ready to create and that isn't the point you know so don't don't worry about about you know other people sort of like going pat you on the back and going that's great you know you've you've taken on the seven habits of highly successful people or whatever it might be that's not the point this is something you're meant to do and it's you're meant to manifest it and that's what illumination is as, as i say it's understanding rather than just the knowledge so, I mean, I often say it's wonderful to be a lifelong learner, and it really is, but you're almost too much. You're almost on steroids there. And it, what it really is underlying, what you need to release as a block, is a lack of confidence in yourself. Spirit wants you to know you're far more advanced than you think you are. And you will bring in, you will get to the Nine of Pentacles, you are going to bring that in, and you're going to help other people as a result of it. And there's something almost revolutionary about the way that you show abundance and the, the law of attraction or whatever it is that you have been trying to learn about. But it's different, and, and you've just got to recalibrate what success would look like. Okay, so let's have a look. We also had a couple of cards that were also under the Illumination card. And this is to show dream energy and also oracular energy that might also help you sort of do this process and get to the, the outcome that you want. So it may pick up things that you need to release. It may pick up things that you need to bring in. So dreams, animals, okay, and oracular gratitude. Yeah, I think if you get, that's the one bit from all of this, the sort of being in the space of gratitude, being in the space of the heart knowing that and bringing that in and trusting yourself rather than always looking for evidence that's definitely a kind of a precursor to it. you will start to see and understand illumination is knowing that you can do this not trying to study it and prove it so that's definitely an energy to help you animals i think connects to the wild to the natural so i think and it can it depends on the animal so if you dream about animals they could be power animals for you but they also also might be you know that your fears sometimes so understanding what your fears are why would it be that you felt you needed to keep proving this point are you around people that that are very combative you know do you need to sort of find a new tribe and the people that you could care for and who understand what you do 
Or animals, on the other hand, if it's very loyal or supportive ones, may be showing that's where to put your energy because they will understand you and you're not going to have to prove yourself all the time. Let's see the 3D manifestation of this. So we're going to use cards from the different heart code oracles around relationship, lifestyle, career and finance, just to see other energies around you bringing in more abundance into your life. So firstly around relationships, again, this may pick up blockages to, to release, things to sort of build into the foundation or things that are new. So we'll just sort of see what cards come up. So around relationships, letting go, yeah. There's some people, some attitudes, some arguments almost that you just need to let go of. You know, there's a point at which you have got enough information and you certainly have. You know what you're doing. Just let go of those who would naysay or second guess you. Lifestyle. Departure. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a sense here. And it's all about sort of letting go of, of patterns and, and this sort of like... It's not obsessive. I don't think you're obsessive, but I think a, a sense of like really focusing and really trying to prove something. Just sometimes you just have to leave certain things behind because they're just they're not going to be in tune with and in alignment with what you're doing. Let's see around finance. So one of the one of the measures of abundance. Alternatives. Yeah, this allows you to think of alternatives as an alternative thing that is going to make you money. So if some of this is around. I've been doing, you know, all this sort of spiritual work because I want to bring in abundance and I look, it looks like X. Then what this is actually saying is it could also look like Y. There are, there are different alternatives to do this. You know, don't get sort of stuck on one particular pathway because whatever pathway you do, this is saying very clearly, you'll get there, you'll make this and you'll have that stability and you'll be looking after others and, and all of that kind of thing. But you'll be then pruning everything back again and starting on something new. So be open to change. And around career, self worth, yeah, you've just got to, you've just got to have enough heart for yourself as you have for everybody else, frankly, and and not listen to other people's opinions, but but understand and believe what you can do. That's really the key, you know. Just get on with it on a material level, because you're going to be successful once you allow yourself to be. So let's see a little bit about what you could manifest using. Uh, a spell oracle, so sort of manifestation energy, and then we're also going to use some astrology or numerology information around what you can manifest with growing your abundance, part two. Divination. Okay, so you definitely, so this is saying, you know, you, I think most of this is for people who've done a lot of spiritual work. You definitely can do it, and you have divination, so you have a way of being able to to test things that way, trust that rather than, you know, the arguments you have with people. See what divination tells you. You've got a skill in that direction and being able to see when things need to change. And intuition, yeah, highly psychic. But this is the point, highly psychic. You don't have to keep listening to everybody else's theories about this and studying it and so forth. You know, move to illumination. That's what you're meant to be able to do. I think many of the people who've come to this is a spiritual path of this to you, spiritual business, spiritual approach, and that's fine. You're all over that part two. Let's have a look at some astrology or numerology energy, which fits with sort of divination and, and intuition. And again, this is like these manifestations. They're not talking about money, though. I do think that money comes, abundance comes, but it's like a byproduct. It's more the real manifestation of your spiritual knowledge and trusting it and being optimistic about it rather than, rather than sort of the dollar signs in your bank. Let that look after itself. Let's see. Astrology or numerology. Okay, eight. Yeah, hard work. There's hard work and it's material work. You do have to focus on that. Focus on financial issues. You will make it because of this spiritual ability, but you do need to manifest it in the world. Eleventh house. People, the right people around you, maybe through social media as well too. There's sort of something about networking and getting out there and finding the right people, and that's partly how you'll help people as well. And the 10th house, yeah, it's about your career ultimately, whether it's a spiritual career or whether it's, you know, you know, a creative thing where you've got a message out there, whatever it is, there's a very strong emphasis on being in the world, your vocation, your personal brand, your connections to others, and that the actual material outcomes, you'll prove it by doing it. Like if, if you have got caught up in arguments with people about spiritual systems or about how the world works, it, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. If you get into doing it, that's going to look after itself. 
Okay, so let's have a look at what support you could have from the sort of wild world. So a couple of divine animal cards and also one from the Australian wildlife area for just a, some support energy for you as you manifest more abundance into your life. Dolphin, happiness. Great, yeah, have a bit of happiness. As I say, with the Queen of Cups, with the heart, you know, like this is, you, you're far too hard on yourself about, you know, not having all the knowledge. Just enjoy it, bring it in, you know. That's that's a really strong energy to make you start to enjoy rather than constantly analyse to death. And, you know, I'm someone who analyses to death, so I know that kind of energy. So, so this is good. This is, you know, Spirit is saying you can release that. Then we have hair cycles yeah and understanding the cycles because this is the thing you're going to start to see that's going to click in you're going to understand it it's like you're going to be like a kind of spiritual gardener you're going to know when it's a growth time when it's a pruning back all of that kind of thing just hair will help you keep in touch with those cycles so that you you do manifest on a longer term and it's it's more you know the the journey as i say rather than the the destination and then from australian wildlife we have emu, spiritual leader. Yeah, and you may ultimately end up being a spiritual leader. This is the thing. <laughs> like, I just I just feel like, yeah, illumination, you know, like you, you may ultimately end up creating a different pathway, a different way of looking at these sorts of things and lead others. But while you're constantly trying to find in, you know, the books and the texts and all that sort of thing, you know, the, the proof for your faith and the insight, you're missing out on the illumination that comes from doing the work, so to speak. Okay, so let's sort of see what you can create with your own creative energy and your own magic. So creatively, senses. Yeah, this is again the material thing. Get into your senses. It also suggests spiritually as part of your divination, part of your intuition, maybe in various clear senses that are, you know, sensate, you know, kinesthetic, that kind of thing. But getting in touch with that, not being so much in your head, is helps you to create what it is that you're trying to create and bring in the abundance that you want. And in terms of magic, Ubuntu, compassion for others, yeah. This is, your heart is your secret weapon. You really do care about other people. This is why it's been sort of hurtful to you when people haven't agreed and you've gotten conflict because you really, your heart's in the right place. It has been right from the beginning. And Spirit doesn't want you to lose your heart, but wants you to start to think about how to use that, you know, going from just feeling it to, to caring for others, helping others. You can lead people to something that is more materially useful. You know, and, and actually works, not just theoretical. You know, and, and that's part of your magic. So to finish off pile two, we're going to go back to the garden and we're going to get a dragon butterfly for a synthesized sort of message of the energy about how you can bring more abundance into your life. And we have magnificence. Oh, that's lovely. So yes, once you... Once you get to illumination, once you move from learning to the illumination, the understanding, the manifestation, you can be a spiritual leader, you can be magnificent, you can show this in practice, and you can show how, with compassion for others, how cycles of life occur and how one sort of rides the wave, so to speak, picking up sort of the dolphin there on the waves, and you know, how you can find happiness. So you really can do a lot in this space in whatever way you choose to do it. You know, and you really can be a spiritual leader, but you just have to stop worrying about the theory and get into the practice. That's all spirit really needs you to do. So I hope that that resonates for you, Paul, too. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So this structure shows the sort of structure of the gardening metaphor that I talked about in the introduction. So this is around the pruning, what you can let go of, what you can lessen, what blocks you might need to, to remove aspect of it. This is the tilling of the land, the foundation, getting everything ready, the things to sort of still have, still focus on, but don't have to be the primary focus because they're the foundation for you. And then this is the new seeds, the new things, you know, picking up the connection card that you were potentially the reason that you came here. It may not be the reason, but potentially it is, depending on how you chose coming to this reading. And it is interesting because 
that card on its own, if that's the reason you came here, for some of you it may be because you're looking to manifest a love connection or something like that or more connection with others. And there is an element of that in this, but what is primarily in this? I feel this is a really interesting spread. I think this is for people who've come in to this life with a lot of prior knowledge and, and have worked at very powerful levels and particularly around sort of like spiritual occult sciences, that kind of thing. Definitely something like that. And, and or you've developed a lot of that in your life so far. But you're moving from that to something that is more materially manifest. It's very interesting because when we look at the pruning element, we have ambition, knowledge, and the alchemist. This is why I feel like many of you have come in with, with significant occult and spiritual knowledge and ability. Because I feel like many of you may literally have been an alchemist in past lives. Or in this life, you've looked into that sort of thing. You've put a lot of emphasis into the development of knowledge because you've had some very high ambitions about what you wanted to do. If you think about the alchemist literally and almost sort of allegorically, allegorically as well. The alchemist was wanting to turn base metals into gold. That's about as ambitious as you can get. And there is certainly knowledge around that, and it's certainly around abundance. So, so there is certainly a focus for you, and I think from past lives, stuff that you've brought in, where you have very much thought, I want to achieve materially on that level. I have ambition. I want to be successful in the world. I want to be seen in the world. That will be the way that I know that I've achieved this, that, that I have turned the base metals to gold. But I want to use my spiritual knowledge and my spiritual sense to do it. I don't want to just do it as a business person per se. I don't want to just do it as a politician. I don't want to just be born into privilege and just have it. I want to use knowledge to do it. I want it to be also connected to my spiritual path. So your ambition in the world has been very strongly connected to that. I think because you've done that in other lives. Now, if you don't believe in other lives, that's fine. It's maybe just an energy. Maybe it's even an energy that you grew up with. The sense that one is meant to achieve, one is meant to be powerful, one is meant to do something beyond even what your, your parents did, you know, this sort of sense of upwardly mobile energy. And spirit is saying, you don't, there's nothing wrong with that, but that can be pruned back, that approach can be pruned back. Because you've reached a spiritual level, either in this life or in other levels, it's actually meant to be about making you less about the drive and more about the emotional experience. The priest, the priest doesn't necessarily want to be powerful, I guess, unless they want to be Pope or something like that. They, they want to be tranquil. They want to be emotionally sort of supported. And in this particular deck, there's a sense of sort of emotional, good, positive emotional energy coming in with the nine of, of water or nine of cups. So what you are meant to take forward is this sort of spiritual sense of there is a spiritual cause to what you do and it should make you feel tranquil and within yourself and enough within yourself. You don't have to be just, you know, do I get to the next level? Because that will bring in the right connections for you. And interestingly enough, where you can get more knowledge with the eight of pentacles, you know, like material outcomes, material benefits, definitely, but also more learning, more knowledge, the right teachers, the right collaborators, all of that sort of thing. But it's very material and it's very much in the world. And so I think what, what this is saying is that that the need to kind of focus on all of it, to, to get to the top, to, to be the wisest person in the room, and I'm not saying that in a pejorative sense, it's just you know, about knowledge, about that kind of thing, to have the ancient wisdom, to, to be the alchemist that connects all these things. You've got to do all of that. Let go of that because the foundation for you is the spiritual side. It's there. It's always going to be there. Take that as a as a you know consolation when things aren't working out for you. Take that as a, a foundation to what you do. But you're really supposed to be looking at getting the right connections, the right material outcomes, the scientific approach. So instead of being sort of like all a spiritual and science, it's it's there's something material. To really bring in your manifestation, it's more around what's in this world, knowing this world. It's almost as though you've spent a lot of time wanting to know the esoteric and the, the sort of like the liminal world and the other dimensions and all of that kind of thing. And Spirit is saying, you've got enough of that, don't worry about it. To manifest now, you need to find the connections, the teachers, the people, and also ultimately probably also to teach others 
that is more scientific, that is more material. Like it really is a focus. It's a, a focus issue to shift for you to bring in abundance from wanting to kind of cover it all to being confident and tranquil about your spirituality. So therefore open to really look like, what does this mean in this material world? So again, the alchemist, what was the actual process, the chemical process to turn base metal into gold? Not just the allegory of that as a spiritual development. So for you, a little bit less on worrying about being sort of like esoterically aligned and a little bit more about the material world. How does that bring things into being? Is what will help bring in your abundance. But you don't need to worry that you're going to lose your spirituality. It's too firmly in your foundation and you have too much joy and tranquility about it. But that's what spirit wants you to do, to enjoy it and be tranquil in that space, not to feel like you constantly have to get more and more of that. You, you've already achieved a lot of that. This is about now manifesting in the world. So it's a very positive energy for exactly the, the nature of this reading. So let's see what else spirit can tell us with tarot. So we'll firstly ask a little bit more about any blocks or things that need to be pruned back and why. So a little bit more information on why it would be that this sort of ambitious alchemist with all the knowledge can be kind of pruned back a bit to get to the, 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 the learner and the connector and the scientist who sort of is looking at it on a material level. So what else can spirit tell us about this so that you can bring in your abundance? Okay, so this is saying that while you stay in this space of sort of wanting to kind of manifest all of it and, and constantly in the sort of ambitious, I want to know more, I want to, you know, I want to be a master of the universe, that type of thing, you actually stick yourself in suspended animation. I think Spirit is saying you've done all that before. <laughs> and, you know, this is why I really feel with this group, there's a lot coming in from past lives. So don't stick yourself in suspended anim animation and don't get stubborn about it. It literally is like somebody who, as I say, has a great de degree of esoteric knowledge and spiritual knowledge, but they're in a scientific environment or they're in a very material environment. And it's like that's actually been an issue because the ambition to make it all things has probably blocked you. Knowing you can be that in private and in your own self, but focusing on what the material thing is that you're around, the workplace that you're in, the people that you're with, whatever it is, and knowing that you can learn something from that as well too, that it's not, it's not sterile. If you're worried the scientist is sterile compared to the alchemist, that's not the case. The connection is really vital, and the more that you focus on that, it's like when in Rome do as the Romans do. Don't be stubborn about it. It, it is a kind of a stubbornness of the ambition here that gets in the way, that stops you from really manifesting what you want in your heart and actually blocks your own inspiration coming in. Yeah, it's like you, you want to be so different and unconventional in a way, but in fact, part of this for you in whatever this is, whether it's in relationships you want to be in, friendships, work, or as I say, you know, like you know, scientific discovery or academic discovery or whatever it is, it's actually slowing you down. Your stubbornness to be different and to have this, this, and, and almost to be recognised to have this whole thing, you know, and to be, to be sort of, you know, able to sort of maybe even skip certain steps in an academic thing because you've got all of it. Like that's actually getting in the way of you achieving something. So it's like just, just be more calm about that. You have it. You don't have to prove it. This is about understanding the environment that you're in, getting the right connections, and therefore getting the outcomes. So let's ask a little bit more about this, a little bit more about what energy there is for what, how you can manifest abundance. Okay, yeah, this is pretty clear. I think many of you you felt like whether maybe you were incredibly precocious at school or at university, but you know, or something like that, but people didn't really understand you and you felt that you weren't being heard and seen. There's been something where, where, you know, or in a workplace or something like that, where real knowledge that you have, I mean, you really do. This is not, this is, spirit is not saying that you don't have it or that, it, you know, your ambitions were wrong, but it was like they weren't seen, you weren't with the right people and you weren't understanding almost the language of the people that you were dealing with. So, so what this does by focusing on that and focusing on proper collaboration, the right connections and so forth, 
will bring you the recognition you're looking for. That's the way to do it because it's sort of like you, you, you understand the system that you're operating in and how to communicate in the system that you're operating in. It takes you away from that sort of sense of being hostage to fate in some way. So, and being more tranquil about that also helps you let go of a sense with the Wheel of Fortune reverse that, that you know, somehow there are blocks to you. The, the only block is just adjustment. This is what it's saying. It's adjusting. It, it may even be for some of you that you have to recognize that the people that you're dealing with are not as advanced as you. And to try and communicate with them as though they were will just get their backs up or you won't be understood. To Part of this might be that you gradually, with that sort of educational side of the Eight of Earth or Eight of Pentacles, you teach people through the connection, but you do it through their language. It's more material. And eventually bring them around. You take the drama out of it. Then you will be recognised. But it, it's almost like the really precocious protege or something who, who people felt was too big you know of themselves and i'm not saying that you're, you're egotistical or anything you are you do actually have this but I, I think it's an adjustment issue that helps you helps you to be seen understood to manifest better so let's get some last advice from spirit from the tarot around how to do this Yeah, definitely you can't do it alone. Connection, if you were drawn for connection, you know, you know it on some level. So this isn't sort of, you know, a mystery to you. But even if you, even if that isn't why you came to the reading, you know that, that, that there is a need to connect with others, that you won't manifest. To come out of a sort of sense of lack, of being not understood, not being able to manifest, not being able to make what you want, you need other people. You need to find that collaborative energy. And to some degree, as I say, maybe to hide a little bit of your lion, you know, and I, and I, because I genuinely think you have it. It's not, I'm not saying that you're sort of egotistical and it's hollow. You genuinely have it. But I think you're in an environment where you need to bring others along with you and you need to almost like gradually expose them to that knowledge and that concept, but not in a way that makes them get their backs up and so forth. And in a language, as I say, a kind of a structure that they will understand that is an investment that will start to grow. You will really start to see results from that and you will see the, the wisdom in it, that that is, is the best way to manifest in this world. Because in a sense, somebody who's like an alchemist, they're almost above the world in a way, like, and, and, but you're in the world. So you need to sort of understand what that means and not everybody has sort of reached that level. Because I do think most of you, you've done it in a past life or something. Or as I say, you've been brought up with this sort of thing. So it's it's second nature to you, but it's just not to other people. So it's understanding that. So let's have a look. There was also a couple of cards that was under the connection card that are looking at dream imagery and oracular imagery. And it's sort of just to see what else might either help with removing the blocks and, and what you need to prone back or the things that you're trying to seed. So dream energy, house, buildings. Okay, that's building something that will last. That's, that's a sense. And also in dreams, I've heard a theory that, you know, you're often everything in the dream is you, but very particularly around houses. If you dream about houses, it's it's a, a representation of you. So, you know, what's happening in the dream? Is it is it that you feel like you can never sort of get to the, the top floor, for instance, because the ambition is being blocked? Then, then maybe have a look within it about what are the ways to sort of make the connections between the floors, for instance. If you're dreaming that you're in very cramped quarters, you know, that might be picking up that you feel that you're having to cramp yourself down too much, that kind of thing. So there's something about building a foundation but there's also something about how are you expressing yourself and then we also have ah creativity oracular so there's something creative you can bring in and maybe that's the key actually that instead of it being about sort of like who has the most knowledge or something if you're in this sort of scientific material world you're bringing things into being then there might be a creative approach that you bring when you bring the connections in a different way of doing things a different way of looking at things that people can understand and go along with there might be a creative approach to this rather than say an academic approach it feels very academic to me okay so let's see what you could manifest you know taking this advice this gardening advice so we're going to look at hard code oracles with relationships lifestyle money and career just for some energies either about what else to unblock or what else to sort of build so for relationships attraction okay 
So you may draw, once you do this, once you start to sort of understand the environment in, you may draw, you'll draw people to you. So you won't be alone. You'll get the connection. You may also bring in a love relationship if you're looking for one. So that's, that's good. It's sort of like, don't, don't get so lofty. And I really, I keep wanting to say, I'm not saying that anybody coming here is egotistical. I don't think that at all. I think that, that there is, there is, pride is justified when, you know, pride is okay when it's justified. It's just that to get that connection, sometimes you just need to like hide your light a little bit. Let's have a look at lifestyle. Foundation. Yeah. So you are building the foundation for this and it is going to build and so forth. So that's there. And that's an, an understanding that, understanding the foundations that you're dealing with. Plus it's pointing to the foundation level of this reading, which is about being tranquil and being able to just sort of like enjoy the spiritual thing as opposed to feeling this enormous drive to keep incorporating it, maybe in an environment where that isn't really understood to the same degree. Let's have a look at the very literal manifestation side of finance and then career. So for finance, offer. Ah, yeah, see, so once you start to do this, once you move away from from wanting everything to understanding the environment and how to focus in and manifest in the environment, you'll draw financial offers in. This is why it's going to be a good investment for you. And career, boundaries. Okay, so yeah, this is internal and external boundaries, I think. It's sort of like, you know, you don't have to become like the people that you are mixing with. You just need to understand their language and how to deal with it and to make sure the right people are drawn to you in the longer term. So having your own boundaries around that. But I think there's also boundaries around how much you show of what you know, because I just think it overwhelms people. And so do it gradually, have boundaries, bring them along on the journey with you. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the manifestations. So we'll have a look at sort of like on a kind of spell level what you could manifest with this. And then we'll also have a look at some astrology and numerology. So manifestation of of the pruning foundation and new seeding process for you would be magic. Yeah, because you are, you're a magician, <laughs> like you are. It's just doing it in a different different way and, and not necessarily showing everything to everybody. And it also makes me think of glamour magic, which is when you need to be invisible sometimes, like knowing when to show your face and when to, to wear a mask and that there's nothing really wrong with that. You're not coming from a bad place. It's coming from a place of understanding and ultimately compassion. And abundance, yeah, you'll bring it in, definitely. So this is, this is the one key. It's like just recalibrating your ambition to be more about connection and collaboration because the rest will look after itself. Let's have a look at astrology or numerology energy around your manifestation, your abundance. 11 yeah there it is again you are you are this like certainly spirits doubling down tripling down quadrupling down on this you you definitely have the occult knowledge you definitely have that background very much so and 11 is the number of doorways and and new new journeys and so forth so so being comfortable to move into the new thing you don't need to keep proving this you you definitely have it that's why you can bring this in Then we have waning crescent moon, which is really saying, you know, you might have to let go of certain things. And I think it's letting go of the way that you're communicating this. It's actually interesting. It makes me think I've been watching a series um, called The Man Who Fell to Earth, which is sort of like a, a sequel series to the David Bowie movie of many years ago. And it has an alien who comes down and who has to be able to work with other people to bring about an outcome. And I'm not going to spoil any of this. But... There is, you notice, and it's beautifully done, it's sort of this, this advanced being having to adjust and learn how to communicate with humanity so that you can actually then collaborate. That's kind of what this feels like. So, you know, if you haven't seen it and you, you have access to it, maybe watch it. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. That's the energy of this. And then we also have trine, and it will be easier than you think. And connections will be easier than you think. So let's have a look very quickly at what planets are in trine that sort of ease this for you. So I'm just dealing out till I get some. So I've got Mars. Yeah, your ambition. So this is your ambition. It's not saying get rid of your ambition. It's about how you use it. Mars and Saturn. Yeah. Like 
where you have the boundaries, where you show your wisdom, where you don't, where you, how you balance what you know and understand and the structure of what you do with action. You, you can do this better than you think you can because you are good at it because you are good at it. I just wonder whether some of you were born into families that didn't understand it or you've been around groups that don't understand it. To some degree, you've almost felt like you had to kind of prove it by success. But as I say, it's sort of like I think you can actually, through connection and understanding, you know, through using the language and the approach of the people that you're around, because you have a larger repertoire than most people, you're going to find that's the way to do it. That's the way to get the balance between your wisdom and your ambition. Okay. So let's also have a look at what might be supports for you. So we're going to get a couple of divine animals and then also an animal from Australia in terms of wild wisdom for you around bringing in your abundance. Peacock. Oh, God. You can't write home about this. Peacock is, is a major, major symbol of alchemy. So after the Negredo, when everything has been burnt down, the first thing that they see is a lot of, you know, like beautiful, translucent, wonderful colours, which is like a peacock. So this is coming out of that and really emerging and so forth. So peacock is there and brings in prosperity. It's again saying that this just slight shift in how you do things is going to really reap rewards for you. And your own understanding of alchemy can tell you that this is right. Okay. And dolphin, happiness. And it can make you happy, you know, and that's nice. It's happy. It's better. You know, if you have connections with people, if you're understood, you're going to be happier. It can be a bit lonely being the smartest person in the room. <laughs> so, so, you know, connecting with people is good. Let's also get you a animal from Australia. Christmas beetle. Creative inspiration. Yeah, so that, that allows you within the context and that to sort of bring creativity in. And I think we had, did we have creativity before? Or am I thinking? I think we had creativity as the or oracle. So there is definitely, yes, we did. Sorry for messing all that up. There's definitely a sense of like bringing through the inspiration, inspiring others. That's, that's the key, being able to inspire others. Okay, so let's see what you can then bring in with your ability, so your creative ability and your magical ability. And your magical ability is significant, I have to say. But let's see the creative, because it's also talking about your creative inspiration. What, what will work for you there? Cycles. Okay, so understanding. Yeah, and maybe that's the cycle of learning, I think. You know, that, that people will catch up to you if you gradually expose them to that rather than sort of like demand to be understood in the beginning and your understanding of cycles your alchemical understanding of cycles something creative could be made out of that and the magic of you opulence it's time to lead you are yeah it's lead but lead in a different way so you know if you went into an organization to be a manager and you didn't use any of their sort of language and you didn't understand what they were doing but you had a vision and it might in fact even be the vision that the organization needs you're not going to get people to follow you what you need is to be able to understand the system that you're in work within that connect and then teach and lead in that way okay so to just finish off pile three i'm just going to go back to the garden and find a dragon butterfly for you for a synthesized energy around bringing abundance in Compassion. Yeah, because you do you do need to be compassionate. This is this is part of it. It's being compassionate for those who are not as advanced as you, bringing them along the way, teaching them in a way that gives them dignity, that doesn't make it about a competition, that doesn't make it about an ambition. Things will work out, you will get the abundance, you will lead, you will do all those things, but you first of all have to make the connections. Just relax about the spiritual stuff. You're all over it. It'll come to the fore when it's necessary. But you've got to look in the material world and, and you know, it's like a, an artist. You know, you've got to work with the clay that you're given. You know, what, what does this look like? What could this form into? What beauty could be created from it? So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 3. Hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Apart from that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 4, to your reading. So this is to show the structure that I talked about in the introduction. So what is time to remove blocks, limit, lessen, prune back in the garden? 
what is the sort of foundation, the tilling of the soil, what you can sort of build upon, but it's not necessarily your primary focus for the new, it's, it's what you've already well established and you can leverage. And then we have what is new, what you're bringing in, what you're seeding and so forth. And that has the innovation card that may have been the reason you came to the reading. And yeah, whether or not it was, and I wouldn't be surprised if many of you it, it is, it's very interesting because there's almost a full cycle to this where it's saying that you need to prune back exactly what it is that you're going to seed as well. <laughs> and, and it's very interesting that we got the gardener here because it's a perfect analogy for, for the whole structure of this reading. So probably this reading more than any of them in the group, there's a, the natural sense of the natural cycles and so forth. And why I say that, why I say that in a sense you need to let go of and prune back exactly what it is that you're then seeding, but you seed it in a different way. This is what I'll get to. Is that we start here with an energy of devotion. Devotion, here we have the Ace of Earth or Ace of Pentacles, but we have the flirt. This gives me a sense that there is almost a side of you that spirit wants to sort of point out, which might be very devoted to the concept of the new and what is exciting and what is fun and the beginning of things that almost blocks you from taking it to full fruition. So, you know, in an organizational context, there are people who are very good at the innovation, the inspiration, but not necessarily about how you take it all the way through. And they're often people who are very, very innovative and very sort of inspired and very creative, but not necessarily, as I say, the long-term sort of people. This looks as though something that you need to really bring your manifestation in, you actually have an extraordinary ability to, to think up the new, to be inspired, all of those sort of things, highly creative, highly inspirational, way ahead of your time. And it is, it is quite practical, but you also kind of just love the new idea. You're devoted to the new, to the extent that you may not be thinking enough about the longer term. And what you need to see down here with the father is the sense of all the way through and the gardener, the cycle from the beginning to the end. That is what will truly bring in innovation for you. It's, it's seeing something through. You know, it's, it's deciding enough about what it is that you really want to do to do it. And the clue is here in the foundation because it's saying that you, you are now at the point of having that mental clarity, of understanding that pattern. You're ready to go on the journey as the youth towards what it is that actually matters as opposed to just flirting with lots of new ideas, new jobs, new things, all that kind of stuff. You really want to do that and to tell a story, to take the story all the way through. So I think that the people who've come here, you've kind of had the aha moment. You know that, that you do have this incredible inspirational fire, like incredible, whether you are creative or as I say, you, know, you could be in, in, in you know, AI, in sort of technology, you could be in science, you could be in anything, but you're able to see things way ahead of other people. It's probably a psychic ability associated with this as well as everything else, but you're just incredibly creative, incredibly inspirational, but you're too devoted to that bit. That's what you have to prune back. You have to lay the foundation with the mental clarity that you have to work out what that journey is, what your story is, what is it that you want to develop from the youth through to the father. And you can do it. It's just a matter of understanding you're the one who tells the story. You're the one who has the narrative. And so therefore, instead of always stopping at chapter three, you take it all the way through to the epilogue. That's, that's really what this is talking about. And that's becoming the gardener, the innovator who actually knows the cycles, brings things to fruition, then, then prunes back again and then brings the new in. You know, it's like understanding the full cycle. That will bring in your abundance, being able to see from point A to point Z. That's basically the, the key message here. And, and so, as I say, it's using what you already have done, but that you're pruning back using it in a different way. That's all this is really saying. It, you've got everything you need. You've just got to see it through. And it, there could be any number of reasons. I'm not meaning to be critical. There could be any number of reasons that you haven't seen things through. And it may be organizational structures and you're always in the design phase and, and then the actual manifestation is, you know, the, the sort of implementation is done by other people. It could be all sorts of reasons why you're there, but that is, you need to prune back just that and get to somewhere or within yourself, get to a point where you take it from A to Z. And it may be you need to run your own business or something like that to do it so that you do 
do get to do or, or be in a small if you're in a large organization and you're always in product development and never in implementation maybe work in a smaller organization so that you can see it from the beginning to the end that's the only real thing you know you can manifest so much but it, it's a matter of not just flirting around the edges of the the idea and really bringing it full cycle so let's ask Caro for a bit more information firstly about a little bit more about this block about this sort of Flirtation with the new, devotion, in fact, to the new, how that could be a block and how to release that block. Okay. So this is just basically saying it's limiting yourself it's mentally limiting yourself. You know, your, your mental ability, your mental clarity that has already been developed is off the charts, but you're using it almost against yourself. And you're, you kind of, it, it's almost like you'd like to be in that design phase behind the scenes, not sort of really, you know, like out there with it, you know, like, and you get really excited about new ideas or whatever. But that becomes a bit of a mental trap to you. And it actually limits your creativity. Your creativity is so much more than you're giving yourself credit for. You're not, not just an ideas person. I remember reading, you know, like in Hollywood, that there are some people who just come up with ideas for screenplays and then somebody else goes off and writes them. That It could be kind of like that energy as well too. But this is saying if you were in that situation, you, you could actually write the screenplay as well. You could take it from A to Z. You could be the director. You could be the producer. Like you're, you're limiting yourself by only sticking in the ideas phase and feeling that's your mental space. You have far more mental clarity than that. It means that you don't fully manifest what you could do and often things don't get completed. That's why it's an issue. It's so excited by the new and so devoted to it that you're actually limiting yourself. So let's have a look at what you can do if you move to this sort of innovative gardener father phase. Okay, so firstly, if some of you, though, you know, if you've come for innovation, I think a lot of you will have been coming about creativity and so forth. But if any of you came to this and, and seen the devotion and the flirt, you sort of feel like you have lots of relationships and they don't tend to last and so forth. Then, then one thing, if it's around that, is that you can actually find the right person and, and find that kind of emotional sort of completion and so forth the mature phase to it that, that allows things to grow and blossom and, and it's a new way of relating. So if it's about relationship, you're certainly able to bring that in. It's just a, it's a change of mind as much as anything else and starting with, with that mental clarity to tell the story that takes you to the emotional outcome that you want. If this is about creativity, if it is about something in a career or something like that, then this brings you out from behind the scenes a bit it brings you the right sort of people in the celebration and so forth. It's, it's much more emotionally good. But it is a little bit more, you know, it does make you sometimes feel a little bit like, oh, wow, you know, am I in uncharted territory here, you know. But that's half of the thing. If you could fall in love with the concept of the new at each step, so, yeah, and the, almost the risk at each step, because it's like you've been sort of in love with the concept of the new at the beginning. But, but if you could fall in love with the risk and the decisions and the choices and the creation at each step along the way, then this chariot reverse becomes a very positive thing because it becomes your preparedness to do that, to see how the garden grows, to innovate as you go along, to iterate as you go along. And it will, it will actually show you far more about your creative potential and your potential to, to manifest. So let's get some final tarot advice for you about your manifestation. I mean, this is maybe saying that, that you've almost doubted your own sort of structure past the new idea. But you know, with that mental clarity as where you're at at the moment, you're underestimating yourself. You're more than capable of dealing with this. And that's half the fun. <laughs> Pole four. It's half the fun. Okay. So some other advice. Okay. So what this is saying is that there is some value to traditional things, to, to processes, to organizations, to learning, to frameworks. There certainly is some value to that. 
So what you incorporate with that is important, but not to not to incorporate anything that doesn't feel close to your heart, close to your vision and so forth. So it's like if you were creating a new you know, piece of artificial intelligence, for instance, then there's obviously some actual learning and so forth that needs to go into it. And what are the steps? And if you haven't gone through all the steps, go and do the learning to make sure you've got the right framework, that you have the mental clarity. That's all important. But also make sure that it doesn't straightjacket you. This is about innovation. This is about gardening. This is about iterating as you go along. So that's how you keep this this sense of sort of risk and excitement and and so forth and and you know flirtation almost with with you know what is new through the whole process. But there is something here about looking into the structure and the formal sides of things and so forth. What are the steps that you need to take in whatever it is that you're doing? So that's important. This is also, if it's about relationship, it's saying don't commit to a relationship until you're sure that it's the right one for you. You know, that's part of the exploration as well. Okay, so what was also under the innovation card were a couple of cards to show sort of imagery maybe that you would be getting in dreams and also oracular imagery around you that are also messages either about the block that you need to sort of prune back or about that something you're bringing in or about the foundation that you have. So you have food okay and renewal rebirth well that's lovely in terms of oracular stuff this is the point this is this is you being able to be comfortable in the chariot reversed in in that 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 things are not always able to completely balance and part of it is about how you adjust and you move through and you keep things alive and vital this is a renewal and rebirth for you when you really understand that you can be the storyteller of your own your own narrative that's going to be powerful for you. You're going to be able to see something through. Food, I think, is about nourishment. How do you nourish yourself as you go through this? You know, how, if, if your main nourishment has been the sort of excitement of the new, how do you keep that sense of nourishment going? What is healthy and good for you as you go through this? And if you dream of food, it may be indications along the line that, that you're sort of getting to one of those points where you're feeling almost like, Am I being nourished by this? So really thinking about, you know, what are what are the innovative things that you can do at this point or how do you learn about something or how do you feel more in control of it? All of that might be a sort of sign from you about how to keep going through this, how to have the, the stamina and the, the nourishment to keep going through the whole cycle so that you see that you can do it. But that's part of your power, Pile 4. Okay, so let's see... And the 3D level, how this manifests energetically. So we're going to use the heart code oracles for relationships, lifestyle, finance, and career. So just some energies again that will pick up one or more of the aspects of this process. So for relationships, realization. Yeah, this is all just about a realization, how this is affecting your relationships, how this is affecting what you love, all of those sorts of things. Once you see, and so if some of you have been in many relationships and you feel like I never find the one, it may be because you've been in love with the concept of the new. Once you understand how what is the story that you want to tell and you bring that clarity to it, that realization, you can bring in better relationship energy for you. Let's have a look at lifestyle. Argument. Yeah, because you might have been in a lot of arguments with people if you if you are always in the constantly the new. So I think this is again about shifting out of that. It also means that sometimes you're going to have arguments as you go through. You are going to have to be prepared that once you're really in the in the, the thick of things and and making something and bringing it manifesting into being, you know, like arguments can be healthy. They can be part of what keeps it exciting, keeps it interesting. So it could work either as something you need to sort of move away from or something you need to embrace in a different way. Let's have a look at money. Target. Yeah, have a target. This is part of the narrative. If you're always in that sort of like inspirational level, it's often hard to even like sit down and work out what this would look like in terms of outcomes. And so it's hard to bring it in being. But if you project plan and you financially plan and you say, this is how I'm going to measure it. This is how I know how to iterate as I go along. And you have targets. It, it starts to bring it into that mental clarity and into the manifestation level. And it gives you something to aim for so you keep on the path. And then around career, communication. Yeah, and communicating more and across more and with more people and your idea at all levels and so forth. It could be that some of you, it's in communication that you do your career. And that is a very fast-paced, innovative area, but seeing the whole news cycle through in a way could be something that is being talked about here. Okay, let's see what kind of 
magical manifestation energy, both sort of in terms of how that might look and some astrology could come from this process of bringing in your abundance. Ambition. So yeah, your ambition, like widen your ambition. You don't just have to be an ideas person. And magic, yeah, and that brings in your magic. You can, you can do this. You are truly, in, you are truly more able to do it than you think. You are truly aligned with the energy of this sort of reading. So just, just have faith in that, and and look at it as a, a longer term game, really, because there's, there's a kind of a game, sort of fun element of this. So you know, work out how to align your ambition with your magic, so it's fun as you go through it. Let's see some astrological or numerological energy around your manifestation, part four. Two. This could bring in a relationship, potentially. It could also be that you, you need more than just yourself. You know, you need to be connecting with others to do this. Gemini. Yeah, communication again. For some of you, it's definitely about communication. For some of you, it might literally be about writing novels, writing screenplays, that kind of thing as well too. You know, and that and seeing it all the way through and knowing and not just, not just loving the first idea, but seeing it all the way through. And full moon. Yeah, your harvest bringing in the manifestation. So connecting more with other people, seeing it through, telling the whole story, using your mental clarity brings in your harvest. So that's pretty clear and pretty positive. Let's see what help you can have with this. So we're going to look at some animal help. So divine animals and then also uh, animals from the wild in Australia. So firstly, divine animal energies to help you in this manifestation journey. Sea turtle. Stability. Yeah. This is the thing. If you're always in the ideas and you're always in inspiration, it's very exciting, but it's not very stable. And there is, in the whole process with that chariot reverse, you're going to come through times where you feel unstable with it as well too. So sea turtle here is to help you have that stability to see it through. And tiger, will, yeah, and having the will to see it through. Because it is kind of perseverance. You know, they sort of say, that saying that, that you know, success is like about, 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So there's something like that for you, I think, about seeing it through. And then an animal from animal or natural being from Australia to help you. Possum, the trickster. Okay, so this is to keep it fun, I think. I definitely think there's a side of you that needs fun, needs inspiration, needs a bit of risk. So I think the possum is there to sort of allow that and to put a bit of a sense of humour into it and, and make you sort of feel alive even when you're sort of hitting those sort of points where it's more about stability and it's perspiration rather than inspiration, as I say. So that energy is there to keep things fun, I think. Okay, so let's see what you, what energies you can bring through yourself. So your creative energy and your magical energy. So your creative energy that will work for you as you manifest your abundance. Resistance. Ah, okay. So this may be this may there may be a kind of a balance here. Your creative genius and what you do may be, in fact, you resisting your own tendencies to be in this space. And also how you deal with resistance as you go through each level becomes its own inspiration. So it's using that creatively, using your own tendency to to want to be in the inspirational space, but then seeing how you do that to, to get past resistance at each level is part of your creative process and part of what will bring it through all the way through. And the magic energy that you have, Ubuntu, compassion for others. That came up for one of the others, so you might have connected into more than one reading. So yeah, compassion for others around this is, is always a, a magical thing to sort of understand the implications of seeing things through, you, you know, whether it's in a relationship or other things. It's sort of like seeing it and becoming like almost the protector energy with the father there and the gardener, sort of seeing to the cycles, tending to others. This, this takes you just out of your mind and your inspiration into the collective and particularly maybe for one person in particular if it's about a relationship. Okay, so Pile 4, what we're going to do is we're going to close out going back into the garden and finding a dragon butterfly for you. So this is just an overarching energy to bring this manifestation blueprint together for you. Faith. Okay. So yeah, have faith in yourself. So there's something a little bit where maybe you don't. You know that you're inspired. You know that you know, you're a bit of a genius on that level. You come up with, you know, 
10 new ideas before breakfast, all of that kind of thing. But seeing them through, you're not sure. Have faith that you can. You definitely can. The same ability to do this is the same ability that's going to take you from innovation through to the garden, the abundance and everything coming through. So all you really need to do, it unlocks your magic on a broader scale and takes it, as I said, from A to Z. And then you sort of till the garden and start again. So it's always going to be interesting. Don't worry that it isn't. But look to the long term now. Have faith in yourself that you can do it and you can. So I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 4. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe. If you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.